Okay, so today I'm going to be describing tools used for Autodesk 3D Studio Max 2016. So, I'm going to create a simple animation here. So I'm just going to put down a plane, which is just a foundation. I'm going to change the color because I don't really like the color of it. And now let's put in our object. So I'm going to use a teapot as a demonstration. And as you can see in these other windows here, just in this window here, this window and this window, we have different views of the animation. So here we have the front view. Here we have the top view. As you can see, it says top. And here we have the left view, it says left. And here we can control where we want to view our animation from. And if you don't like it like this, we can just click on this little plus and go to maximize viewport. And we have the whole screen to work with. So, so now I'm going to be describing the auto key function. So when we press auto key, you're going to get this red mark or red color go all the way around the animation. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure you have select and move function selected and we're going to move the teapot just like this and move it forward and as you can see nothing's happened what this is what this is right here is the time slider so this is very important and the numbers inside the time slider are the frames so as you can see one frame two frame three frame four frame and five frame so when i move this again My bad. So when I move this now, we're going to, yeah, we're going to get two little checkpoints as I call them. As you can see, two red checkpoints. And what these are, it's just, it shows you the animation. So if I play it, there you go. Now I'm just going to go back to 10 frames. And I'm going to move the teapot again. And then there's going to be another checkpoint. So I'll move it up. And as you can see, another checkpoint has been made. Go to 20, we're going to move it um, this way, and another checkpoint's been made. And if you're wondering why I used the plane, I just the only reason I used it is just to have the shadows here, because if I move it away from the plane, you can't see any shadows, and I personally just like the shadows, really. It's a cool little animation effect, so let's just go to um, 40, and then we're going to bring it down. Go to 60 and just move it out of the way. There we go. So that's the auto key function. It just, when you move an object or try to make an animation, it registers the, the points when you move the object. So you don't have to do it manually. I'm going to show you what I mean by this now by doing a set key. So Let's go back to the beginning, and now we're going to uncheck auto key. Um, we're going to use a cone for this, and we're going to put it over here, just like that. And you can change what the cone looks like just with the mouse, as you can see, bigger or smaller. So, select and move is what we're going to want to go to, and then set key that's what we want to click and as you can see the red the red lights come on again to show you that we're recording and now we're going to want to press set keys so set keys just registers like it did in auto key when you move the object but except for in set keys you have to register it manually so you have to press set keys Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. So we're going to move this up. And then we're going to move frame by frame. And as you can see, the teapot still moves because I've done that animation before. But nothing moves with this. So now we're just going to move that up. Press set key. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, if I go back, there we have it. So you have to, with set keys, you have to do it manually. You have to press this key symbol. As you can see, it says set keys. So I'm going to keep demonstrating. Go to frame 10, and the teapot's up, and the cone's up. So we're going to 
we're going to uh, move it back down again, I guess. Move it down. Press set key so it registers and you know that it's happened. And then we're going to move it. I think we're going to want to move the cone out of the way now. So let's move it over here and press set keys. And as you can see, the checkpoints are going to come up each time you press the key. Don't press set key here, the red one. You have to press the key. So there we have it. Look. Small, slight animation. It's nothing advanced, but it's just the basics of how to use the tools. There we go. Let's take this back to the beginning. And I want to show you time configuration here. Now this this lets you customize the frame rate. So as you can see, by default, it's just NTSC. I'm going to leave that as default for now because I don't want to really want to go into that. 30 FPS is there. And here we have the speed. You can change the speeds. So I'll demonstrate that. I'll go to times four. You're going to see how much faster it goes. So press play. And yeah, it just it speeds for it very fast. And we don't want that. So go back to time configuration. Put it back to the default, which is that one. And that's fine. Now here you can change how many frames you have in the animation. So as you can see, I've got end time here. And if I press up, you're going to see here that more frames appear. So watch this bit here. Each time I press it, we get more frames. So more frames are added each time I press it. Of course, you can manually just type it in. So if you want 100, just do that, press OK, and we go back to 100. I personally like 100, so I'm going to keep it like this. OK, and finally, what I'd like to end with is the render setup. So what we're going to want to do here is make sure everything's unchecked here. So make sure no red light is on. And then we're going to want to go to these teapots up here. And the one we're want to, going to want to click is render setup, the first teapot. So you, you can see there's four teapots. We're going to click on the first one. This is going to give us a menu. And what we're going to want to do by default, it will be on single. We don't want it to be on single because then it will only render one frame, as you can see. So what we want to click is range. And that's going to render the whole animation from zero frames to 100 frames, which is what we have, zero to 100. So we want that, we need to have that, otherwise it's just going to render one, one image. And what we're going to want to go to now is here, render output. So you're going to make sure you make a file, I called mine 3D, and then we're going to, I'll show you here how to do it. I've already rendered it, but we're going to want to give it a name, of course. And then if we're going to make an animation, I say the best one to pick is ABI file because that's the that will make it play an animation because if you pick something like a JPEG it's just going to be an image. So we don't want that. We just best to click ABI save. I'm going to do it over again just to show you guys. And then once everything's checked off so make sure the range is on. Make sure save file is ticked. And now we click render. Yes, we do want to overwrite because I already made one, so I'm just going to overwrite it. And as you can see, it's rendering every every frame. See, look, it's going through it all now. And it's finished. So now, so now I'm going to show you the quick animation. It's nothing special. It's just simple. There we have it. Hope you enjoyed this video, hope it was useful to anyone, and yeah.